afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. I know it's uh, second day, afternoon, right after lunch, so it's the best time to be hearing about uh, mining companies and, uh, and lithium here. Just when I'm going to lull you all to sleep here for a nice afternoon nap. So Brunswick Exploration, it is um, one of Canada's largest lithium initiatives. I was here last year, and we had just sort of started that strategy. And I really do think that we're singling on to something that's kind of unique. You know, historically, exploration, whether it comes from you know classic commodities, copper or gold, like we've been doing that for so long. We go quite honest, since the Bronze Age, right? Thousands and thousands of years, and it's an industry that's been heavily fragmented as well from an exploration perspective, because again, we've been doing it for so long. Lithium sits a little bit different from everything else. It's fragmented, but because, you know, a lot of gold companies decide they're going to call themselves lithium companies all of a sudden. Um, but it, it's also one where we've historically ignored it, and especially in Canada. You know, this is something that just this year, you're seeing a discovery rate in the lithium space. I'm not talking about Brunswick. I'm just talking about a discovery rate that is absolutely astounding. Think how many times you've heard about a world-class discovery being made in a single year. We've all seen those charts from, uh, S, uh, from SNL or, yeah, I think it's SNL, the, anyway, Cap IQ, all those charts that show zero copper discovery in the last five years, zero gold discovery in the last five years. Just this year in Quebec, we had Patriot announce a resource. That's a tier one resource. That's a world-class discovery. You know, Alchem brought their resource up to 100 million tons. Sayana recently had brought theirs up to 100 at Mont Blanc, another 100 million tons. These are all globally significant assets all being found in Canada, all in the span of the last 18 months. That is astounding. That is absolutely incredible to be going under, to be going through this. And it, and it really speaks to that lack of exploration that we had done for lithium. We were so focused on other commodities that we kind of ignored it. Our, just again, just for Brunswick, this year, our three main assets that I'm gonna talk a little bit about here, in Quebec, um, are, had been mapped. Geos had gone on them. They had done the work. Go figure, none of them had, had bothered to identify spodumene crystals the size of my arm. That's, that's almost silly. Like, you know, I can understand in other deposits, you know, what kind of mineral am I looking at. In, in pegmatites, the grain size is huge. Like we have pictures of our geos like, you know, posing in front of, like laying down next to in front of a spodumene crystal, which is a lithium mineral, that's longer than them, right? It's just, it's astounding. And again, speaks to that concept that we have not been exploring for lithium in Canada. And so when we first formed Brunswick, we gave it a really broad mandate. We said, well, look, we know where we should be looking. Most pegmatites are going to be barren. That means most companies moving into this space are not going to have something of interest, so let's make it into a numbers game. Let's give ourselves as many targets as we can across all of Canada in areas that we feel are close to infrastructure or, you know, benefit from strong community support, and we're just going to try to make discoveries. So again, we went ahead and explored all across all of Canada. Who cares about it? There we go. Um, you know, we did New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Manitoba, Ontario, Saskatchewan, and most importantly, Quebec. We have perspective. It's kind of funny, we can actually bring perspective because we went ahead and explored everywhere. And the same way that you would see, you know, from a commodities perspective, if I said, you know, what does the Middle East produce? Everyone's first image that's just gonna jump to their head is oil. Well, given another five to 10 years in terms of exploration, putting some of the assets that are being discovered in, in Quebec, People are going to make the same associations, like, oh, where does lithium come from? And they'll rattle off Western Australia, South America, and Canada, right? That's the, and specifically in Canada, they'll mention Quebec. We are making discoveries, and we, I mean, as an industry, on a weekly basis. Not a week goes by where a new company doesn't announce a new discovery in the province. And again, that is an absolutely astounding concept. Just ourselves, we have contributed three discoveries. Starting off in the south at our Anatecal project, Anatecal, Maine, we made the discovery of the Anna is showing. We're going to be drilling that next year. 
Then, about a month ago, we announced the discovery of the Elrond project. Again, um, we're going to be drilling that next year. But most importantly, you know, back in early August, we made the discovery of a Mirage asset. We've already done 5,000 meters of drilling. We're going to be doing another 15, 1, 5, uh, thousand meters of drilling in early Q1 next year because we find that we have something important here. We, have, we think we have something sizable, but we still are big believers in our strategy. Next year, we're still going to do more pro prospecting because I believe it's an expiration window. Capital markets windows, they come and go all the time. You know, price goes up, price goes down. People want to finance, people don't want to finance. But expiration windows are something that are extremely rare. Last time we had anything remotely like it was back in the uranium boom, like from 2008, when you made a huge rush of discoveries. And so I want to make sure that Brunswick stays at the forefront of this lithium exploration boom. I want to have this company associated with as many discoveries as possible. So that's why I'm still going to be active. I'm, I'm going to drill a lot. I'm going to do a lot of work. But I, I want to emphasize that I'm not going to forego our strength. I'm not going to forego that we are exploration geologists and we can make more discoveries and we will make more discoveries. So let's dive into Mirage here. 42 kilometers from infrastructure, everything that we've staked, everything that we look at has to be within 50, 50 50 kilometers from infrastructure. It's just not going to work otherwise. Uh, it is a bulk commodity. I'm going to zoom in again here where you see all those nice, neat triangles and squares. So this is what matters here, all right? What we are defining is an important um, dike system, a dike swarm. Sort of, I wish I could draw here, but anyway, that sort of middle where you see those squares, that's like a two and a half by three kilometer area, and we are just finding dike after dike of, you know, spodumene bearing pegmatite. It is absolutely one of the best environments to be making discoveries. We've drilled, you know, already 5,000 meters. All we're doing is just trying to scratch the surface here. You know, we're putting a hole 50 meters depth, then doing another hole from that same platform, 100 meters depth, moving 150 meters. We're just trying to get the lay of the land. We, we, because we obviously just forest fires this year, so everything was slower in getting going. We were in the field in August. We had been in the field one day in June, made the discovery on that single day. We're back in August, two months later. We were drilling six weeks after that. Assays are going to be coming shortly, and we are going to be going very hard here next year. As I mentioned, at least 15,000 meters. It is all the pegmatites we've drilled are open in every single direction. We have a boulder train. What are boulders? You know, glaciers come in, they break stuff off. Well, these are the types of boulders that we're finding. Like we're talking about massive things that are almost the size of your house. And they are filled with spodumene up to three kilometers away. There's a lot of opportunity to continue growing these things. Because again, when you're looking at boulders that size, the source has to be from within 500 meters. They're just too big to have, they're too big, too angular uh, to have traveled from very far. So for us, when we're looking at a, a boulder train that's three kilometers long, and on top of that, another zone that is another two kilometers where we're now seeing actual outcrops, it's going to be something really, really exciting. There's room for growth. Again, we just started prospecting. We found another pegmatite outcrop filled with spodumene three kilometers to the north. So now it's a six kilometer zone um, of exploration that we can go ahead and do here. We are looking for, and we are hoping that we are at the start of a sizable discovery here. And we are gonna push this as hard as we can. We're building our own camp. Uh, just to the north of here along the Trans Taiga. We're getting ready for our winter campaign. We're getting our logistics all lined up here because we are going to be doing a, do a big push in 2024 for exploration. But as I mentioned, well, actually here you can see some of these outcrops. So in the background there, you can see a hill. That's all spodumene. Uh, in the foreground, or I should say a pegmatite. In the foreground here, you can see a geo that's on an outcrop himself. Um, we're just scratching the surface here. There's going to be a lot more. Results are going to be coming out uh, quite soon. So lots of fun things. Here's that boulder again, just massive. Uh, very, you know, if I was to send this in a truck, like that'd be ready to go into a mill. And we've just got to find the source here. So lots of more upside to be done. You can see the spodumene crystal. Again, two waves of government geos have gone through here, mapping, identifying the pegmatites. Couldn't be bothered to identify crystals the size of one's arm, right? That's the potential of exploration across Canada. 
we have made more discoveries. You know, this we announced a month ago. Uh, it's, we took a project where everything was named after Lord of the Rings character. So then, you know, this is the Elrond project, and when my teammate discovered, they're like, well, can we name it a Lord of the Rings character? It's like, sure, let's go for it. So we're gonna name it Arwen. Um, close to the road, there's power line that cuts through our property. That dash line you see there in the uh, lower left of the screen is the Billy Diamond Highway. It is pretty much a paved road rated for 100 tons. It's a heavy duty infrastructure road. Um, you know, we're about 15 kilometers from it here. This is, you can see the discovery. It's not exactly small. It's a sizable outcrop. Again, filled with spodumene. You know, Mapton is a pegmatite, so geos had come in and walked on it, never really bothered to identify the spodumene here. Uh, it goes for 250 meters before we lose it in what amounts to a swamp. This is like a little island in a predominantly wet area. It's just, it's not a lake, it's not anything like that. It's just kind of marshy, swampy type of land or all around there. So it's open in all direction. We think it has a very shallow dip to the north, uh, probably 15 degrees, which is fantastic for open pit mining. Uh, again, we're going to be drilling this probably in February. Lots of upside here. Uh, this is further to the south, so we have two projects, Anatecal West, Anatecal Main. Anatecal West, I'll just start off with that one, I'll come back to this one. We had done some drilling back in April. Great widths, great intercept, high grade stuff. Uh, right next door to Alchem, so these are pegmatites or their continuation of what is on their property. So you can see the property boundary right there. Uh, we believe some of these holes like AE, AW2303, uh, that's potential for another dike. There could be more repetition. On Alchem's side, which is a US, what, eight or nine billion dollar company, not exactly a small company, they're putting this property, or the pro our neighbors, I should say, the project in production. Uh, hopefully within the next 12 months here. But for us, not only do we have extensions on their property, it's a number of stacked dikes. This is exactly what we're seeing here. We have at least two dikes. We only drilled it down to a vertical depth of 130 meters. We have potential for more dikes. That's where we're already starting to see. We'll probably get back to it, you know, at later next year, but we just have so many targets to go ahead and test. Uh, we made another discovery on Anatecal, Maine, which is 22 kilometers to the uh, east here. So this is, you can see in the bottom of the screen there, it's at least 150 meters. It's open in all directions, probably two dikes. You know, they stretch over a total width of about 80 meters. So, you know, lots of fun things here. The interesting thing is that um, as opposed to uh, Anatecal West and the Alchem deposit, there's, there's a structure, right? These pegmatites are taken structures. What we're seeing here is that, you know, at Anatecal West and at Alchem, they run perpendicular to the structure, so there's a limit to the strike extent. These are, it's a lot of them, but they don't continue on for like 10 kilometers. Not that they would, but they don't co continue for a number of kilometers. Here, we're running parallel to the structure, so there is strike potential here as opposed. This is something slightly different than what they're seeing at Alchem with a lot of exploration upside. We'll probably drill this in Q2, uh, late Q2, early Q3. So look, you know, lots of projects, lots of projects in Quebec. Next year, we've got, you know, I'll just jump to the last slide here. Lots of cash, I, this is a couple months old. It's probably closer, it is closer to $10 million now. We're doing a flow through financing. It's gonna be ringing under, call it five and a half, six million bucks. Um, we are going to be excessively aggressive in terms of lithium exploration. We are focused on making new discoveries across all of Canada. We are going to be doing prospecting. We are going to be doing drilling. We are going to be active at all phase of the exploration cycle. And we are going to push this as hard as we can because, again, that exploration window for lithium is going to close. And by God, I want to make sure that Brunswick is at the forefront of it. And I don't want to look back five years and say, gee whiz, I wish I pushed a little bit harder. So that's it in a nutshell.